I thought we'd have a look at the torque limiter in the BMW G450X engine. So first thing to do is take your, well, take the engine out of the bike, take your clutch cover off, undo the 10 screws around the top of your clutch basket, take the ends of the clutch out, next is take this nut off, which is done up pretty tight, I think it's 120 newton meters. So you undo that, it's a normal thread, comes off anti-clockwise. Undo all of your bolts around your cover. Take note that inside the water pump, oh well that's the other thing obviously, yeah, take your top of your water pump off, remove your uh, centrifugal pump disc, there's a little screw in the middle. There's an extra screw that sits inside here, a black one. So when I first undid all these, I didn't, well I spotted it, but I didn't think it was needed to come off to take this cover off, but it does. So you've got a screw just here. It was black in colour, mine was, I don't know whether they all are. That means you can take this off. Now when you, I've taken the torque limiter out of this cover already, but when you pull this off, this bearing, will be inside this housing, so your torque limiter will come off with this cover. Once you've got that off, we've actually made it to the torque limiter, which is just here. But like I say, this will be, will already be in this cover over here. It'll be stuck in just like that. You have to heat this cover up to, I think it's 80 degrees Celsius, so it's not super hot. You need to heat it up evenly, to, otherwise you might crack it. Then you need to really carefully drift this out from the other side. You can get a drift onto it. There's a little hole there to give you access. Drift this out very, very carefully. And there you have your torque limiter. Now your torque limiter is quite interesting because it does a couple of jobs. The centre of it is a hollow shaft however it's got a, a blockage a baffle in it it's sort of machined out from this direction and then machined out from this direction this end of it is your gas ways for your crankcase breathing of the engine these four slots that you can see on the back of this smaller inner gear go to four holes that go into the center of this shaft so your crankcase breathing is done it goes through these four holes into the centre of this shaft and then it flows through the centre of this bearing to the hole behind and then that hole behind leads up to the crankcase breather and you have a pipe off of here which goes up to your air box. Because the gases flow through the back end of this torque limiter your bearing is shielded if this bearing didn't have any shields on it the gases will be able to flow through the bearing itself in which case you would end up with a lot of oil coming through this and ending up in your airbox. BMW obviously went to a lot of trouble to they could quite easily couldn't they have put they could have put a baffle plate here and had a hole just here but they didn't so for whatever reasons they went to a lot of trouble to machine all these holes in here and this shaft has got four holes that correspond to the position of these four slots here so from this little gear backwards you've got crankcase breather gases flowing through it out of the centre of the shaft through the middle of that bearing into that hole that you can see at the bottom of the bearing and then up and out of that pipe there. The other half of this bearing, uh, this torque limiter has oil ways in it. If I take the screw out, which I can't, If I take the screw out the back of the torque limiter, this screw by the way is done up to 45 newton meters and it's thread locked. As you can see it's got a hole through the end of it. When this is inside 
the engine and we could and we could see it through this hole in this case this hole here it obviously ends up with oil going up the centre of this screw through the hole that runs all the way through it you can see daylight through it take the bearing off next shims to give it the correct slippage value this is called a Belleville spring it's basically like a, a sort of domed washer conical washer sort of thing and it acts as a spring right this oil then that runs up the other end of this torque limiter because this is spinning centrifugal you've got centrifugal force acting on the oil so that enables the oil to go into the passageways inside it if I can take this disc off which isn't easy look because it's stuck together with oil that's got it put the rest of it back on so what we end up with is we end up with oil inside this shaft here and just there as you can see is a hole so the oil under centrifugal action this thing's spinning pretty rapidly oil will be thrown or forced out of there and it'll get forced into these grooves and oilways inside here if you if you kind of see there as well when that disc's in place there is actually a, a gap right at the very edge to allow the oil to come out of so it doesn't get trapped in there so that's your first flat disc you got bushing there's your four oil ways now when we flip this over this is the side that has the ears on it and again you've got four oil ways in there which with that disc on look you can clearly see that the groove goes past the end of the disc to allow oil to come out of the end so you've got an oil flow through here essentially And then you've got these discs with the ears on them that are all stuck together with them. Let's pull the whole lot off. And again, you've got kind of little flutes in them to uh, allow oil to get in. So when it rotates, it's lubricated. Double sided disc, another one of those, and the rear disc with the dimples in it. So on this shaft you can see the oil holes, you've got one there and at 90 degrees opposite you've got another one there. So the torque limiter shaft itself, you can't see all the way through it because it's got a restriction which is just in front of where this, this face of this smaller gear is. And like I said before it's got four holes which correspond to those so the back half of this is allowing gases to flow through and out of the engine the other side is collecting oil from within the engine and under centrifugal action is using it to force oil through these oilways in these other components um, I suppose lubricating it but more importantly I guess cooling it so that is your torque limiter on your G450X a lot of people though um, seem to be of the opinion that you need to change the location of the engine's crankcase breather and rather than it being through this bearing in the engine the original location here it's relocated up out of the top of the cylinder head area but as you've just seen on that, BMW went to a lot of trouble to have the gases actually going out through that uh, component. A lot of people are saying that they get oil in their air box. Now I have never, uh, well, the only time I've ever had that is when I fell off the bike and it was still running 
uh, line on its side so when I put it upright I did get a little t you know like a teaspoonful of oil that came out There's, the airbox has got a couple of holes drilled in it near the bottom so that if if you do get oil in there it runs out of the holes while the bike's not being used and stationary on its side stand but I've never really had this issue where you're getting oil in the airbox if you were to take out these seals off this bearing off the rear bearing you could you could end up with oil in your airbox because instead of it running through this torque limiter which um, I don't know in some respects it's almost like a like a cyclonic hoover I guess and the fact that this thing's spinning round and the air has to come through these holes and grooves and through this tube maybe there's some sort of cyclonic effect which um, stops the oil coming out and it might throw it back out of these um, four grooves but like I say I mean w there must be some reason why they've done it this way it would have been much easier and much cheaper to have just had a hole say here or here or anywhere really just to let the crankcase gases out rather than doing all this it's possible if your rear bearing I suppose is starting to collapse and this the oil seal the rubber seals aren't really sealing up very good anymore you might be getting oil being blown out through the, the inner bearing that's a possibility um, but otherwise this engine's in reasonably good condition I've not had any issues with oil in the airbox but I have had issues with the torque limiter slipping which is the reason why I've taken it out but that kind of concludes this little film clip because I just thought it might be useful um, if other people have never seen him here to um, see what it's all about.